Colossians 2.14, having wiped out the handwriting requirements that was against us. We talked about that this morning. Salvation means an end to all guilt because my sins are on Jesus. You know, a lot of people go through life guilty. And they, they drink, they take calmatives, they take, you know, all these different chemicals trying to, to ease the, the racking guilt that they go through. And you know what Jesus said? I have, verse 14, I've wiped out all the handwriting requirements, everything that you broke of my righteous law, I wipe it out. Salvation means an end to all guilt because all my sins are not just, it's not just because someone says, oh, don't worry about it. You ever had, doesn't, doesn't solve it. It's still, you know, messed up. And you know, people, they, they forgive and they say, oh, don't worry about it. It's okay. But it's still there. Only God can take it away. Only God can remove the guilt because he pays for that sin. And he gives and, and, and releases us. Forgiveness, afiyami, means to be released, to send away the guilt. All who are in Christ, their guilt is sent away. It's placed on Christ. And so the fourth truth is salvation means an end to all guilt. All my sins are on Jesus. When we gather for communion, we're saying all my sins are on Jesus. I'm not guilty of any of them. I'm a convicted sinner. Yes, I have been convicted by God that I've committed all those sins, but I put my faith in the one who died as my substitute. And all the guilt and all the penalty and all the payment is on him. Keep looking. Look at the end of verse 14. Because the fifth truth is in the end of that verse. It says he's taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. And the truth is this. Salvation means I have nothing to fear. It, it's, it's out of the way. It's nailed to the cross. I don't have to fear anymore about someone bringing it up. You know, I just think about some of these people that live in dread fear that their lies are going to catch up with them. And all their deceit is going to catch up with them. And, the, you know, all these people that, that have secretly stolen or secretly, I mean, I've told you the story. I remember early on in my ministry, I met a, a, a businessman. He told me that he had embezzled from a Fortune 500 company tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars. And he was a member of the church. And he said to me, I live in fear every day that they're going to find out. And they're going to come and they're going to haul me off to jail. And I said, you know what you ought to do? You ought to ask the Lord to forgive you. And then you ought to tell them what you did and just say, whatever you do, I'm forgiven. It doesn't matter. You know, that's been many years ago, but I went back and I saw him a few years ago and he looked like a completely different person. And he said, I turned myself in. He said, I finally came to the point where I said, "I, I don't want to fear this the rest of my life. And he says, I just laid my, my guilt before Christ and said, I, I stole and I'm willing for whatever they do to me. And the company said, we wish we could prosecute you, but the statute of limitations has run out. And he said, there's nothing we can do. And he says, praise God, you know, but I'm free. And, he, and it just took him confessing and, and just being willing to just be like David and say, I'm guilty. And the Lord graciously transformed him. 